Hi hey everyone, welcome back for more Let's Play Back to the Future the Game. The story so far, Marty is back in 1931 to ensure that young Emmett Brown keeps a date with destiny. Teen Doc must demonstrate his electrokinetic levitator at the Hill Valley Expo, an event that will end in disaster, but leave the budding inventor convinced that science is the path for him. Citizen Brown is also back in 1931, and he's got other ideas. Thanks to him, Edna is now convinced that Emmett's levitator is a danger to public safety. She's managed to bully Detective Parker into shutting the exhibit down. To get it back open, Marty will have to eliminate Edna, or at least eliminate her clout in Hill Valley. Which we've already seen, but thanks to a bug, we're back beginning of that. Meanwhile, Citizen Brown has spirited his teenage counterpart away. Marty's brazen old antagonist is hiding in plain sight, under the helmet of a deep-sea diver. No doubt he's got Emmett stashed in the bathosphere. Marty's got to get him out of there before he misses his big moment. That's exactly what we're going to do. It may be quite some time before the exhibit is fixed. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, and we can't go anywhere can't walk off the platform. All we can do is take a look around. I'm still here. Yes? The thing I can't figure out is how did you get him in there without anybody seeing? Who? You know who. Young man, I told you there's nobody in that bathosphere. That's right. He did say that. I heard him. Yes. Drop the act, Doc. You may be a great scientist, but you're a lousy actor. <laughs> uh, you are the expert on acting. Or so than you. Open up that bathosphere. I told you, the equipment is jacked. If you come back later... Bullshit, Doc. I know exactly what you're hiding. Is there and... a problem here? No, everything's just great. <laughs> ah, cue ball. Talking gets hmm. us nowhere. And just for a spoiler... Nothing we have will convince him to learn to Come raise down, the bathosphere please. again. The bathosphere exhibit is currently closed for repairs. Oh wait. The only thing we can actually look at well we can talk can't to you Artie. See he's messing with us? There's nothing wrong with those gears. Monsieur Duto is doing his best to fix the exhibit. Hovering over him like that doesn't help the situation any. So that's pretty much it. We only have Doc, Artie, and this hose. So let's play with the hose by stepping on it and cutting off the oxygen supply to the bathosphere. What does it matter if there's nobody in the bathosphere? It's very bad form. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Funny how hard heavy that affected him. So sorry for the inconvenience. But now let's go back up. I think up. I'll climb the ladder and just hang out until you get it fixed. Suit yourself. You may be in for a long way. So you saw he reacted pretty heavily when we did the hose. And yeah, we can come back down if we really want to, but there is no reason to. So let's step on the hose again. After all, what would happen if, you know... Step back! You're clipping the hose! What does it matter if there's nobody in the bathosphere? It's very bad form. Oh, sorry. No, we're not sorry. We're going to continue to hold on to it. Because there's not much else we can do. It does if there's somebody inside the bathosphere, but I thought you said there wasn't anybody in the bathosphere. So all we have to do is wait. Hey! I'm just going to keep holding this air tube closed until you raise the bathosphere. I wish you would. Why not? There's nobody in the bathosphere, right? And, you know, if Emmett is in there and he's holding that air tube closed, uh, Emmett's suffocating. You and if Emmett's suffocating... To both of you. Step off the hose! No. 
Raise the bathosphere, Doc. We just have to wait. I command you uncrimp that hose. Funny. You'd think it was you who was running out of air, not the guy in the bathosphere. I I don't know who who was yours talking about. It's as if you two were connected somehow. And eventually. Come on. Off the holes. Raise the bathosphere, Doc. I won't do it. Then neither will I. This is kind of a dark turn for Marty's character, isn't it? So long. The years, they the yeah. There, see? It was just a malfunction after all. It keeps saying that. Let's get you out of there. Huh? Emmett Brown? Then it was true. Hey, True, and you. now Doc is hey, gone. Hey, he just took that guy's wallet. I think he took his wallet. Oh, remind me not to become an oceanographer. I guess I must have a touch of claustrophobia. Never should have gone in there. Well, we've all got problems. Now, you'd better get back to your booth Funny before... Funny thing is, I don't even remember going in there. Last thing I recall, I was in the glass house talking to Carl Sagan. Did you know he's really a scientist? I'd heard. What did he say to you? Oh, he had some sort of spur-of-the-moment business proposition. It was all very rush-rush. I never got the details. It would have meant leaving before the expo was over, so I told him that... Say, where'd he go? You know? Carl Sagan? He had to leave. One of his experiments blew up on him. No, oh, I know how that is. <laughs> Unfortunately... What's this? Oh, yeah. Edna made Detective Parker shut down your booth. He says he can't go against her. Oh, yeah? Unless we dig up some dirt that'll discredit her in the eyes of the law. So that's what we'll do. Yeah. Now, we can go ahead and go all the way back and redo all the fun stuff we had. Greetings, forward thinkers of Hill Valley. So we will repeat all of these nifty little actions we did the last time. One, to get the recording device. What? The next exhibitor on our list is Officer Danny Parker of the Hill Valley Police Force. Officer Parker is going to demonstrate a few of the many marvelous tools that our boys in blue will soon have at their disposal. The criminal element has truly met his match today. Officer Parker? Who uh, is unavoidably detained? Our next exhibitor is yeah. unavoidably detained, but I'm sure his presentation would have been both enlightening and exciting. Um, how about a round of applause just for the heck of it? Oh, hello, Schmirnoff. So we can talk to Emmett now in this little group. Do you know what she made him do? Yeah, come here. Listen, if Carl Sagan shows up again, you're not going to let him lead you away, are you? Are you kidding? My sole concern now is to get back up to my electrokinetic levitator. Good man. <laughs> Edna made Parker close your booth down. I know that. So he'll <laughs> only open it up again if we could find a way to discredit her. Do you know anything that'll ruin Edna's standing in town? Yes, I do. She is a rotten kisser! Oh! <laughs> that wasn't what I had in mind. Edna never confessed anything to you, did she? Like what? Something incriminating. Like, for instance, her being the speakeasy arsonist. Edna the speakeasy arsonist? Then again, why not? But she never said anything about it to you? No. 
Assuming we get Parker to open your booth back up before they call your name, is the levitator ready to go? All except the power source. You did bring the static accumulator, didn't you? Yeah, I've got it. You want it now? No. Wait till we get back to the booth. <laughs> so, the rest of the conversations run. with them go pretty much two. exactly the oh, same. A Sisyphean task, if ever there was one. I don't know if I'd call it Sisyphean. It's close. But just because we've already seen most of these conversations, and we've already played around in that house enough... Okay, call me a snoop. Let's go ahead and do this. And just get the new bits of conversation with Edna. And get the conversation with Emmett. Hill Valley Expo with a yes. This is Carl Sagan. Ooh, the mysterious Mr. Sagan. What do you want? And now we can talk to Emmett. Could you get Emmett for me? Sure thing, Mr. Sagan. Or at least till he's there to, you know, be gotten. He told me to tell you he started over, and he thanks you for your job offer and all, but uh. He'd rather stay in Hill Valley and do his own thing. Conversation terminated. Good for you, Emmett. Yep, and that's good. We wanted to hear that. So let's try the console again, huh? Now let's have our conversations with Edna. Because these will be somewhat different. A couple of them. Klondike 4253. Hill Valley Expo, tech me speaking. Who's this? Yeah, we need to be Carl. It's me, again. Carl. And we'll speed through that. Talk to Edna. You put Edna Strickland on the phone for me. Sure thing, Mr. Sagan. Hey, Strickland! Somebody actually wants to talk to you. Mr. Sagan? What happened? I thought you were distracting Emmett. I was? Oh, yes, of course I was. Then why is Emmett standing here, valiantly trying to convince Detective Parker that he should be allowed to go through with this ever-so-dangerous display of wrong-headed technology? What can I say? I was outsmarted by that wily Yakov Smirnov. Well, that puts a crimp in our plan. Yes, yes, our plan. About that plan. Now, we ask I this. I have momentarily lost track of Emmett. Do you have any idea where I might find him? You lost him? You were supposed to keep him distracted. Oh, I have been. He's just wandered off. Well, go look for him. I've got my hands full with Parker. That should have changed. It did change when I was doing it earlier. I'm a little unclear on the details of our plan. Unclear? But it's your plan. I mean, I I'm worried that you're a little unclear on the details. You were supposed to keep Emmett distracted, but it appears that you've been foiled by Mr. Smirnoff. What can I say? He's too smart for an old fogey like me. So I see. There's been a change of plan. What? Yes, I've changed my mind. I think we should let Emmett go through with his demonstration. But, but you told me it could be dangerous, and that Yakov Shmirnov was a foreign agitator. That the only way I could get Emmett back would be to scoop him up after his dreams were shattered, and, and, yes, and, yes, and yes. so on and so forth. I said a lot of things, but I was a little crazy at the time. The important thing is, now I think you should let Emmett go ahead with his little demonstration. Oh, I get it. What? It's Comrade Schmirnoff, isn't it? Yeah. No, I really want- Don't worry, Carl. You can- So, let's go ahead and finish out this the correct way. Regarding, uh, you know what? You know what? Uh, the little matter we were whispering about yesterday. Oh, that? As a matter of fact, I'm glad you brought it up. I was thinking, wouldn't it be Yakov? Okay, I don't want to hear this again. Uh, I want to hear her go what? creepy uh, about the flames exactly. being pretty. You no, know, it. Oh, I get it. Uh, that was the dog's fault. I could have gotten clean away, and I. 
She's the speakeasy arsonist. Carl? Is somebody with you? No! It's just you and me. You know, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. Why? Because no one else was doing anything yeah. about them. Every night they'd open up their doors serving illegal drinks and loose women, flaunting their depravity to the world, and the authorities did nothing. So I did what any right-thinking rock-willed woman would do. I took action. Oh, and such a gorgeous action it was, too. The fires were so beautiful. The alcohol made them go up in such pretty blue flames. Oh, where was I? You were explaining why you burned down the speakeasies. Yes. Did you find my answer to your liking? It was very revealing. Hang up. What? Jeez, Edna was always a loon. I hope yep. that confession's good enough for Parker. Okay. With that... Ooh, Hi, this folks. little... It's me, Techni, Muse of Progress. Gracing you once again with my presence. And speaking of presents, what better gift could Hill Valley offer the world than this magnificent science and technology exhibit? Hey, folks? If you haven't done so already, I urge each and every one of you to take a peek at Furnishings of the Future. Right here in our main hall. Tickets are available from me, Techni, at our information desk. And Emmett's up next. With that, we are at a stopping point for the video. When we return, we get Edna hot off again. So then, so until then, take care, folks. See you later.